In professional learning communities, we try to employ the strategies of being simultaneously loose and tight. There's some behaviors that we're just tight about that we insist upon. We're tight about the school's vision, the values of the school, the learning mission, and we're loose about how we might go about achieving that mission and how we might operate within the value system of the school. So a good way to think about it is that we're tight on the what issues, but very loose and empowering on the how issues. And we had definite, very concrete learning goals. And what my staff started to discover is that those learning goals, which I was very tight about, wasn't, it, it was very little looseness when it came to learning goals and student achievement. When it came to those things that, they, that were important, not only were they monitored, people were held accountable. When it came to team meetings, those are things I was tight about. That was something that the staff was instructed to do, and I had to monitor those things. Uh, I was tight about looking at data. I was very tight about creating common assessments and creating a day where staff could look at the results of those students' common assessments. Those are the things that were tied. What you want kids to learn needs to be the same, the big ideas. How you assess those big ideas need to be the same. How you teach it, there's the art. And a PLC is not saying teachers need to be lockstep, teaching the same way, on the same day, following the same pacing guide. That's not the case. We don't dictate at all at this school how key concepts are taught. All we ask is that the teachers who teach the same course are in agreement on what are the big ideas that are being taught and how will we know if kids have learned it. PLC schools are also tight about interventions. So if you went negative three over one, you're saying you'd go down three right one, right? One of the key aspects in a professional learning community is how a school is going to systematically respond when students don't learn. For us to let a student go by six to eight weeks without any interventions whatsoever was just way too much. We're still working on your, your science, right? You're at a D right now, but we're still working on that. Mm -hmm. A lot can happen if a student is really determined not to turn in work and not to um, do things that are essential for them to be successful. So when was the last time you pulled up your headline reports to see how things were going? If they're doing that for a long period of time, it's really hard to then get them caught up. So our staff is incredible in that they committed to referring students to us electronically every three to four weeks. How should a school respond when kids don't learn? By ensuring a student receives increased levels of time and support in a manner that is timely, increasingly directive, not invitational, and systematic.